So we are live recording on Hangout on Air. All right, so hey guys, I'm Amy Robinson. I've kind of called this Geffy brainstorm to order here. Uh, the topic is to kind of to explore an interesting idea that I'm trying to do, figure out how to how to graph uh, ideas. So I'm speaking at an upcoming Quantified Self Conference. Uh, it's next month at Stanford University. And most people who track something with Quantified Self track, uh, you know, biometric data. So weight, maybe what they eat, um, blood sugar. Some of these people are really, really into it, track a lot of stuff. Um, I track ideas because I'm kind of obsessed with ideas. I love the human mind. Uh, and I'm trying to understand how I change as a person over time. Uh, when I learn something new, it's kind of hard for me to go back and remember that I didn't used to know it. So I track these ideas that strike me as interesting. I see we lost Vicky. Um, but anyway, that's that's what I, I I've, I've put this together in a spreadsheet, and I'm really not very familiar with Gephi, but I think that the you know I've been tracking interesting things like links and whatnot, and tagging them and weighting them. So it's made a really complex matrix, and I think that there might be something more to learn or to, some intelligence to kind of pull out of this data if I was able to to better analyze it. But that's kind of a long intro. So why don't we just go Dan, and then maybe. Uh, Dutch, I guess if you if you could type in something on on chat, <laughs> and maybe Vicky will come back and uh, introduce herself. Yep. Um, yeah. Maybe we can we can we can read um, what you post in the chat uh, out yeah. loud. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you can read it. Yeah. You have a good accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, I um, I joined in this uh, hangout because I think uh, what Amy's trying to do is. Um, Interesting and borderline impossible. I'm I'm really curious to see how she <laughs> wrangles this problem, uh, because typically when people try to do something with Jeff, it's a it's a rather um, straightforward sort of matrix type data. You know, you got a, a something that links to something else and perhaps a parameter. Um, <laughs> I think Amy's dealing with uh, something totally <laughs> different. Yeah, so <laughs> interesting to see what we come up with. Cool. Okay, Vicky said she got dropped out, but she's gonna try to come back. Hey, uh, Dan, do you want to read Dutch's introduction, yep, or do you want sure. me to? Okay. Um, I'm an organizational development consultant. I'm teaching leadership to supervisors uh, for the Department of Interior and interested uh, with SNA or social network analysis. Cool. Hey, Dutch. Hey, Vicky, you're back. Hi. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um. Are we doing introductions? Yes, there's someone else here. Hey. Yes, we are doing introductions. Okay. Joshua Melville. Hello. Hello. So. <laughs> well, I'll go. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I'm a professor of biostatistics at the um, School of Public Health at Emory University in Atlanta. And I, because of some research projects, I've really become very interested in network analysis. And I'm teaching a class in that that starts Wednesday. Um, I taught two classes um, in network science last academic year. <laughs> Looks like connection problems. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Joshua Melville, we have video of you now. Hi. Hey. So, so we were just doing introductions. <laughs> Vicky's kind of frozen in the space-time continuum. That is the internet of Google Hangouts. Um, <laughs> we were doing introductions here. <laughs> So uh, hey, I'm Amy Robinson. I'm with I'm with Sterling Health. I've kind of called this crazy brainstorm together. Um, anyway, do you want to kind of introduce yourself? Hey, Vicky, you're back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I seem to be getting dropped, but um, can I just finish? Um, yeah. I've been I've taught um, two classes that have lab sessions with them, and have used a variety of different software tools. And I've decided that for this class. Um, this fall, I'm just going to go all the way with Gephi. Um, I had, have used it as an introductory tool in a prior class, and they didn't like me switching around, so um, we're doing it all the way, um, Gephi. 
cool. So what was the other tool you were using? Um, I've used um, in the for the same audience. I used um, Note Excel, and then at the very end, I had to go into using um, Scatnet and iGraph within the R package, which really bugged people. Yeah. Um, and um, then the fall semester a year ago, I also I in addition to those, I used Pyek and. Um, some MATLAB modules. Um, so I've done a lot of different exploration and things. Um, and it's Gephi has given me probably the not only the prettiest graphs, but I think that their calculations are correct too, which is a problem I found with Node Excel for small graphs, which in my research is what I'm dealing with. Cool. So, uh, Josh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi guys. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford, uh, the Oxford Internet Institute. Uh, my supervisor is a guy called Bernie Hogan, who um, he works with Mark Smith, actually some of the Node Excel guys, some of the Microsoft Research people, and um, my interest in Gephi is really to do with uh, real-time interactive online visualizations. So, um, currently involved in a JISC-funded project to create a toolkit for academics to uh, basically upload their data, click through some stages of a wizard, and using Gephi Toolkit server-side, uh, create an all-in-one um, zip file that they can put on their website and let people explore their graphs interactively. Cool. So, yeah, and I also do a bit of work with uh, Facebook Ego Nets, and specifically that's my default stuff. Uh, but it's more to do with uh, context collapse and presentation of self and that kind of business. So I'm I'm a sociologist by training. Cool. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for coming. This is a very interesting mix of people. So. All right, um, I'm, let's see, uh, Josh, what's your email, and I'll send you this data real quick, because I think everyone else has a copy of it, so, except it's, for you. It's uh, joshmelville at gmail.com. Okay, that's easy enough. So, well, sort of this is loading here. So basically, I, I guess what, what I had said before is we'll, you know, now that we've done introductions, I'm going to kind of do a, a brief overview of what what I have been doing, the reason that I've kind of called this brainstorm, what I'm trying to do, and then kind of, you know, get y'all's thoughts about if it's possible, what's what are the limitations, you know, what might be cool to do with all this information, you know, if anything, <laughs> good, good ways to communicate insight from this. All right, so. Okay. So, so is this your actual data you're sending over? Yeah, yeah. I'm sending. It, yeah. Do you? I mean, is that going to be useful as I'm sort of explaining this? Or? Yeah, sure. What is it? <laughs> an Excel workbook or something like that? Yeah, it's an it's an Excel. So, um, let me forward this really quick, and I'll forward you the kind of description that I wrote to um to Vicky and to Dan. You said Joshua Mel Just Melville. Josh. Josh. Yeah. Amy. M E V I W -L, L E. M E V I W -L, L E. All right, cool. That's it. Let me tell you my house. Oh, okay. All right, plugged in laptop. All right, that has been sent. So the data that I sent you guys over is a a spreadsheet of interestingness, right? So let me go back to the hangout here. So I am I'm uh, really interested in the human mind, right, and how how ideas over time influence you know the way that I think, the things that I think about, um, how new ideas maybe contribute to significant developments in projects or the creation of new projects or or really just to to kind of 
see if I can see more patterns in the ideas that I employ in my mind. So I track interestingness, right? And I've been emailing to myself uh, things that I find interesting. So a lot of them are like peer-reviewed literature articles, um, sometimes images, videos, TED Talks, um, photos of notes, or just typed up notes to self. So I've been doing this for several years, and I found out that there's this community of people that tracks all this stuff called Quantified Self. Uh, and I'm going over to their conference next month, which is at Stanford University. Um, and when I found out that there were these show and tell sessions, I was like, oh, guys, I've got some data. Let me share it. Turns out this is totally different than what anyone tracks. <laughs> so when they were like, oh, this is cool. You know, you know, do something. So when, you know, they, they asked me to give a short seven-minute kind of, uh, I think it's called an impulse style, you know, we've got like 30 slides, they go 15 seconds each, but I'm basically explaining, you know, what is it that I track, why I track it, and what I've learned from it. And I keep getting stuck on this, what I've learned from it, because I haven't learned that much. <laughs> I think that there's a lot that can be learned from this. So the spreadsheet that I just sent to you guys, um, let me actually pull it up myself. Um, it's, it's called, you know, ideation. What I've done, you know, so I've, I've emailed all these links to myself and I've cataloged the past, the past six months of them. And it came to 770 total entries. Um, and so what I did is I, not being a very good programmer, uh, copy and pasted <laughs> dates, links, uh, the text, which is the content of all the emails, and then I went through and tagged all of them. And I, I tried to be as broad in tag category as I could. Uh, didn't do that great. It's kind of hard as ideas, but it came to 160 total categories. So when you do that as a matrix of you know 770 columns, it makes a pretty pretty good size you know spreadsheet of information. And then I also went through and uh, weighted these. So you know, as a measure of importance, because I, I didn't really distill out a lot of information. I mean, I didn't edit or, you know, censor any of this, right? So sometimes there'll be bursts of a lot of information. Sometimes they're like work to-do lists, uh, and those are generally weighted one. Um, but so, so on the spreadsheet, you know, the first sheet here is just called interesting data. Um, and you can just see they're, I think they're sorted by date you know, topics, interestingness, and then sent to is something that I think I might be able to use in the future, but I'm not using right now. Um, and then you see the matrix to the right. So interesting data weighted. I think that's a more interesting set of data because it has meaning. You know, it's not just a number. Um, then tag genealogy is something to just kind of ignore. But I started, you know, I made a couple of graphs. And as I started making these, it made me think, you know, there's got to be a better way to display this network because I'm trying to see, you know, the importance of ideas, right? I'm trying to see which ideas influence me the most. Um, one of the things I think that I'm going to start the, com the, uh, the presentation with is this, this experience that I had. You know, I, I go to all these TED conferences, right? And someone one time, this stranger, at the first conference that I ever went to, some guy walked up to me and goes, so hi, Amy, what are you passionate about? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, from a stranger who does that. <laughs> um, and it ended up being a really awesome conversation. But I say this because that, you know, 10 seconds has made a really, like, a lasting impact on me. And I still go back and reference this, you know, this, that you can create a caliber conversation with someone you don't know based on, you know, how you see the interaction. So, you know, that five or ten second sentence that that one person said to me had a much greater impact on me than maybe, you know, two hour talk that I didn't really absorb a lot of information from. And I think some of the ideas that I encounter are, are very similar. So, you know, I've got this, this weighted graph of like which, which topics have the most individual entries based on how important they, they came to be. And that's kind of the, what, fourth sheet on here? So, I mean, science is, is number one. Then, you know, it's got, like, work and uh, health. Because I'm the creative director for a health company, so I'm, I do a lot of health-related things. Um, and then you can kind of, on the next sheet, it's graph. It's a graph between weighted versus unweighted. And I'm just kind of walking you guys through all the data that I have here so you can kind of think about it basically to the extent that I've been able to, to draw insights from it. Um, you know, you can see kind of where they spike. And some of them... You know, some of these little bitty ones like biochemistry uh, or fun jump like three times. 
is three times their height. So then, okay, the next sheet is top rank dot sort dot tag rank dot entry. I don't know why I called it that, but uh, I think <laughs> I think that that is that's uh, all the all the posts that were weighted five, which is of most importance. So so this is like 98 entries out of 770 total ones that that came to be the most interesting posts to me. So. From here, I kind of had a, a couple of different thoughts that I just want to kind of seed you guys' mind, minds with to see what would be some good directions that we could possibly take this. Um, it might be interesting to explore, you know, what are the most interesting ideas that I've encountered and how are they different, how are they similar? Uh, also, even just looking at the overall weighted graph of ideas, you know, which tags occur together, which tags tend to not occur together. Of the, you know, as a time distribution of all of these entries that I've logged, like say all the ones that are weighted four or five, are there sequences, are there clusters of tags, or maybe there are different sub-networks of tag combinations, like most of the posts have four to five, maybe six different tags tops. Some of them only have three. You know, are there, are there days where I'll have a couple of posts with a certain combination of tags coupled with several posts with other combinations of tags that indicate in the future a couple of really important things are going to happen? Like, do you see how I'm, I'm, I'm sort of trying to think about this? But uh, I haven't really quite figured out how, which is why I'm, tr I'm sharing this with you guys. <laughs> you're hunting. Uh, you're hunting for patterns, basically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I am hunting for patterns. Um, so then I graphed on the next sheet is graphing um, top weight dot five. So this is a graph of all of the top weighted um, information. So the first graph on here is top weighted topics. So this, you know, if you compare it to that that first graph of all the weighted topics. This is only the topics that have a weight of five. So these are the top, they're like the most important topics relative to each other, and it's, it's not that different. Um, but if you scroll down, what did I do? Then I did highest weighted tag categories, and that's a little bit different. I mean, science then I think is followed by TED, self, notes. Most of those, you know, self and notes. Anything that's tagged notes is probably going to be tagged self, but not everything that's tagged self is going to be tagged notes. Um, and I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's something that that Gaffey can help sort of sort out. This is a different kind of data, guys. So, <laughs> um, hope it's sparking your your mind with some ideas. Um, let's see what what's next. Highest weighted individual entries. These are basically just entries that have the most tags on them, but these are only among those that were weighted five. Amy, do you want to, um, just a suggestion, do you want to do a screen share um, so we can see what you're looking at? <laughs> yeah. Your yeah, that's probably a good idea. Huh? <laughs> um, let me do that. Screen share. All right, can you, can you guys see this? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. great. Okay, much better. Okay, so I was, let's see. Yeah, this was the page I was scrolling between. Um, let's scroll up. So when I was talking about top-weighted topics, um, is the screen flashing for you guys too, or is that just me? No, it's good. Okay, my screen is flashing kind of crazy. I'm glad that you guys can't see that. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Okay, so on this, you know, this is, I think, the science tag. For some reason, it's, uh, yeah. So that's the value of 145, and these are our top-weighted topics. So among the topics that are ranked five, these are, these are how they compare to each other. Whereas on this, this is just all, this is all the topics total. Um, and then what else did I grab? So I'm, I'm backtracking just a second here. These were the highest weighted individual categories of tags. So science, 145. Um, TED is 125. And this was where I was you know, talking about a lot of the ones that are tagged notes are probably going to be tagged self, whereas everything that's tagged self may not necessarily be notes. Um, I mean, I have a blog where I publish photos of my notes, so you know that's all going to be tagged self. Then these are individual entries. Um, that are and again, all of these are are tagged five. Five being the highest, 
possible t weight of importance. This is life bonus. The, uh, this was actually a little side experiment that I did to make my inbox more fun when <laughs> I had some crazy work stuff going on. So I sent out some, you know, a, a couple of interesting links to friends and said, what's the coolest thing you've discovered in the past week in like three different categories? And I sent this out to you know, a bunch of my friends and just for the next couple days that my inbox was flooded with all these cool things and it was kind of it was just goofy because I was like, guys, you get a life bonus if you do it. Um, but it just turned out really awesome. And I, I ended up finding all these really interesting, diverse, you know, cool things because my friends are a little bit intellectual. So uh, these were some of the, the highest rated tags like spatial scales, TEDx surprise video. We, we did a, a surprise video for, for TED from all these hundreds of TEDx organizers around the world. Um, I, I don't know that a lot can be, be done with this graph. But so just to be clear, that, that graph, like they have, um, so some items have multiple tags. They're both represented in both frequency columns there. So say, for example, something was tagged life bonus and spatial scale. It's in both columns as far as the weighted entries go. That's true. And is that a problem in data? It depends uh, yeah. what you want to read into it. Okay. But yes, yes. Um, if this came in... So this was something, the spatial scales one was something that was a response to this first life bonus email. Either, either this one or this other one that was over here. Um, but all the life bonus emails are not going to be tagged spatial scales. So that's a, what, a directionality problem somehow. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure how to rectify that. But I'm making a note of it. Okay. And then, okay, two tags. Underneath here, I think is something that can be learned from. So this is a, of, of all of the 770 total entries that are tagged, they're weighted five. This is the distribution of how many of them happen at the same time. And you, know, you see they tend to kind of happen in, in clusters um, or pretty high spikes. This was when I started a new side project. When I, so I, I went back and actually looked at, you know, what were these two, what was, what was going on in this, and this one was, th these are photos of old, like, notes. I have dozens of moleskins and, and books full of, like, notes on, you know, ideas, uh, and I started this new blog on this day, so I think that these kind of spikes in output and maybe even spikes in output of specific tag combinations are indicative that something else of importance is happening. So let's see what's this next one. Okay, so that's that's that same graph. Um, and then these these are just individual matrices of all the things that are tagged: science, image, video, because these are some of the um, some of the highest used tags. So what I'm trying to you know what I'm trying to actually do during this presentation is I've, I've got to share some, you know, I've got to, I feel like I can learn a lot from this, right? From, from all of these ideas that I've like, tracked over time. But I don't really know how to distill more information. Uh, I'm a big fan, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back to the Google Hangout if you guys are okay. Um, let's see. Can you guys uh, see me again? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That's trippy. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let me see. <laughs> I hit camera, man. I don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> All right, so so that, that was a brief walkthrough of the data. And now I'm, I'm, I've made, like, one graph on Gephi ever. Okay, but I'm a big Gephi fan, and I look at a lot of the Gephi graphs, and I see how you can you know, distill intelligence from this information. And so what I'm kind of wondering here is, you know, what kind of intelligence can I, how can we better understand this data? So it's not just matrices, and I'm not just making bar charts of most used tags or most, you know, most popular entries. Like, how can I get more depth to, you know, understanding what these ideas are and how they overlap or how they differentiate with each other. I mean, is there is there some way that Gephi could be used to make a network like that? Um, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Okay, so you have these um, ideas listed 
They're all tagged. And you draw connections based upon shared tags? Mm hmm Yes. Okay. And so do you have those listed somewhere? Uh, no, I don't. I made... What do I have? There is... That was one of the suggestions, wasn't it? That you create a matrix based on co-occurrence. Yeah, yeah, I mean... So is that like a correlation matrix? Uh, no, no, it's... Um, the closest thing you might see out there is like a citation matrix, who's citing whom, um, or a semantic matrix. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So if I t so, okay. I I I don't. I just I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be tricky with the way your data is formatted, which is kind of the problem with having like a um, manually entered spreadsheet like this. You might need to break this out like through some scripting in between into a more manageable format. Okay, I don't so know how comfortable you are doing things like that. Um, I'm not, but I can try, and I need to learn how to do these things better if I expect to, you know, go from six months to six years worth of data with this, you know? That's right. Yeah. So. I, see, I see also a little bit of a consistency. Oh, maybe if we go a couple of steps back to what you're trying to do, you, you're trying to um, find some nugget, nuggets of knowledge and something, you know, that you can share during your presentation. Your presentation is coming up very soon. You've got a pretty tight deadline. Mm -hmm. so I don't think you'll be able to do too much. I think, I think uh, uh, we need to consider the time that you have, the technology that you have available to you, and what are you actually scanning for? Um, you, have, you have a very large file with a lot of information that perhaps um, isn't as manageable and flexible as, uh, as you would like it to be. Um, so the question is, Okay, so you're looking for tag, topic, proximity, clusters, subnetworks, combination of tags, patterns, all these sort of things. Um, I'm wondering uh, data collection reliability. You've, you've sort of gone random and manually put things in. It's sort of like a personal gut feeling, you know, as you bump into it. Or did you have any sort of scanning methodology like crawling or did you, did you use any automation um, trying to scan your own activities? like browsing history or um, crawlers or anything like that? No, and I mean, I, 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 there's a lot of data that's missing. I mean, this is literally, these are just emails that I sent to myself. And I, I, when I find something that's interesting, I email it to myself. When something seems like something I want to remember, and I've had this idea of kind of logging this stuff for a while, and I know that email is not the easiest way. I've tried, you know, Google Forms, and I have right now an if this, then that thing that makes a new Evernote you know, entry every time I do this, but it still doesn't populate a spreadsheet. There, did, there, go ahead. Did you see the Gephi email spigot? No. It, uh, it lets you import directly from an IMAP or a POP3 inbox, and then from there you could do filtering. Um, but if you, you probably didn't systematically enter the URL, uh, for example, with a certain thing preceding it or... No. Like that. So you'd have to do it manually anyway, and you're back at square one. But in future, that yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, right. That would be that's actually really good to know about. What's that what called? About the social networks. What What about? Are you active on Facebook or? Yeah, and uh, I, I'm I do Facebook and Twitter, uh, but I, 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 you know, I didn't really find out that I was that I even could possibly speak at this until about a month ago. And then at that point, I had none of this even in the spreadsheet. I was just like, hey, you know, I track ideas. How can I share this? And he was like, oh, this, this will be cool. Send me your data. And I'm like, ah, better make yeah. some data. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm wondering, um, has anyone in the chat here used uh, the uh, Facebook, Facebook plugin for, um, yeah. for Jeffy? Yeah, you have. Um, I, I've actually authorized. It was a bit of a scary moment, but I actually authorized the um, the plugin to access my Facebook via API, and it's basically downloaded all uh, all my friends' photos, packed them up, uh, categorized them, and you know, I, I'm wondering if you can use something like this that can, rather than trying to wrangle too much, maybe you can focus on yourself because what what 
you know, ideas, uh, influences. You're looking for influences, right? What influences you is what you talk about. So you've got social connections, who you're connected with. You've got your social shares, what type of, what, what you share. You've got your likes, what you plus one, what you like on Facebook. And you've got content itself, text, and the keywords within the text. You've got links that you share. Um, and perhaps uh, images, uh, if they're annotated appropriately. Um, I think something like that. I'll see if I can find the actual. Um, have you? Uh, are you aware that this thing exists? Um, the only Gephi graph that I've ever made actually was of my connectivity on Facebook. That I found something that would just let me basically download it. What so, was it called? I don't remember. Was it a social net importer in Node Excel? Probably. I mean, it was. It was just a, a network map of my friends, and it was probably a year ago. And I haven't made anything actually in Gaffy. I mostly just look at lots of Gaffy crafts and I, love, and I love them. I think they're really beautiful and I mean they, they make information communicated in a different way, you know? Yeah, I mean I, I guess like tangentially related to what you're talking about is what is it that network data tells us? So you really have to have some kind of like structural aspect to what you're trying to find out for a network to be useful, if you know what I'm saying. So without a structural component to your question, then you know there's not an awful lot you can do with a network, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. so I think you're really onto something with the the co-presence of tags, because with that you can create a. I mean, co-occurrence networks are really common. Um, there was a great one, for example, with ingredients in food. So somebody put in the recipes to a thousand and one Italian recipes. And you can derive from that a network of co-occurrence of ingredients, which functions like a taste map. So from that, you can visually see which tastes um, fit with each other and go along with each other. So I think something like that for the co-occurrence of your interests might be useful. Mm -hmm. And you could do that with the data that you already have, but you would need to, like I say, dump it out of this um, Excel format, write some script that would refactor it into a way that is um, a, um edge matrix of co-occurrence by okay. these tags. I think actually the uh, one of the Geffy guys suggested this to you in the in the Facebook group when you first brought this question up. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, I downloaded that uh, that what was it? Unit something FL. UCI net. Yeah, you see, and yeah, I, and I downloaded that, but I and I formidable piece of software. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I started reading into it, um, but I haven't, I, you know, I haven't gotten as much into it as I. The thing about it is the file format that it uses is very, very simple. It's all flat text files, with like very simple delimitation between fields, commas, spaces, tabs, that kind of thing. So, I mean, if you get your data out of your spreadsheets in CSV format, it doesn't take an awful lot to just kind of iterate through that and reformat it into a, a format that UCI net could read. I think that's why he suggested that. But, you know, it might be that it's beyond your, your technical skills. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mean out in a patronizing way, but like... No, it's, no, it's, it's legit. I'm not a programmer, and I'm not much of a Gephi grapher yet. Well, don't, don't sell yourself short, because I think a lot of that is just cut and paste. Yeah. Um, what what the suggestion was. I haven't used UCI net, but from my reading of that, um, I thought that you could cut and paste it out of your um, original spreadsheets very easily. That's a good point. So it looked like yeah, it looked like the UCI net was. I mean, it was just a like a text in matrix. I mean, is that? I need to, I don't know. I, I've it has like a data grid view, and I think you can copy and paste from Excel into that because it's like a spreadsheet format. But it's tricky because of the way you've got the data formatted right now. Like you have um, topics is a comma separated list within cells, and that's not the format that you would need it to be. But in. Did, did you guys scroll to the right? Because there's a matrix populated yeah. to yeah. the right. Yeah, oh, there is oh, a matrix right. over there. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, yeah, then. Okay, so that is. Right. There's a few cells in there. And the values in there, they're not binary. They're between 0 and 5. 
Well, okay, if you on the if you just go to plain interesting data, then they're binary, then it's zeros and ones. But if you're on the sheet that has interesting data slash weighted, then it's 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 made with a macro that says, you know, according to the interestingness rank, put that number as the tag. Or as the number in the in the tag field. Cool. Yeah, I, I realize, you know, this is my first attempt at, you know, quote unquote big data analytics and it's not really that big I understand this but you know I got like halfway through and actually I got all the way through and then I realized that I shouldn't have put commas in between all the topics and I should have been <laughs> doing it as a matrix so learning curve better six months than you know six years I guess <laughs> okay so now that um, okay, yeah go ahead well I was just gonna say that it is there an easy matrix multiplication way of doing this in Excel? And I'm and I'm no Excel expert. I mean, I can barely get it to you know add and sort. Um, that if you could do your matrix times your matrix transpose, or maybe it's the other way around, you could get all the co-occurrences that way. Um, Fairly, easy, fairly easily, but I think it might be better to do it in UCNet. Um, but the uh, one thing that you can do in Gephi is you've got things like your node identifiers already laid out. So you have the date of your idea, you've got um, the uh, Oh, the, uh, the, the, the interestingness mm -hmm. of the idea already there. So you could work just with the unweighted data and then mm -hmm. use um, date and interestingness as um, attributes and then apply Gephi filters to them so that you can see the evolution over time once you get it uh, plotted out as well as you could filter on interestingness and look at how those things might change as well. Okay. Thanks. That's, that's exactly the kind of feedback that, that I need to just even figure out what it is that I need to do <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in order to get this into Gephi. <laughs> okay. So, so in order to do in, in order to do kind of a hypothetical graph of which tags are used together, how do I need to change this data in order to to put that, I mean, into Gephi? Or is this something that I just I just need to read the whole Usenet thing and and practice it and report back in like a week? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fast, I know. <laughs> um, let's look at it. Yeah, I, I really do wish that I had more time on this too. I just got this data finished like a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, and had to do a technical walkthrough of my presentation a couple days ago, and then I was supposed to send them a draft on Wednesday. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I think you need to ch uh, tackle a smaller, smaller chunk smaller chunk that's a little bit more manageable. What is the final outcome? Tell us what you want in the end. Do you want um, your most influential ideas to be shown as the biggest nodes? Because you can do you can do proximity of different nodes based on their um, interconnections. That's perhaps, if, you, if you're just looking to visualize stuff. Yeah, I would um, suggest. You can, yeah, if it's just about visualizing. If you want absolute, you know, like table, grid, data, that, that's probably a little bit more um, complicated because um, uh, then you need to do some Excel wizardry there and, and, and that goes beyond me. But I, I think I've done something similar. I've, I've used PageRank um, to, um, or in degree, to actually adjust the size of um, uh, the nodes and that was based on their interconnection. So you would, you would basically get um, all, the, all the topics that you've defined so step one, I think you need to, what, uh, what was suggested, clarify uh, your tags, your topics, your ideas, whatever you call them. And then um, 
map them out. But what's not clear at this stage is how, what are you looking for? It's not links anymore. It's not just links between pages. It could be, um, I think you should decide if you're going to go social, if you're going to go um, what you've been emailing yourself, perhaps links and things. Um, and you need, you definitely need to automate something here. Um, I think, I'm thinking one, one way of automating things is um, uh, using, using a tool like 80 legs, perhaps, where you 80, can, you 80 can, legs. 80 legs. Yeah, you can supply, you can supply 80 legs with all your URLs. Have you got a, you've got a list of URLs that you've um, yep. emailed yourself as? Yeah. So basically, what? Um, actually, I'll, I'll share my screen so you, you can see. Um, Okay, so this is the ADLX homepage. What it does, basically a crawler, much like uh, Google. Um, basically, you can you can give it a seed list, and it can crawl all your um, URLs that you've given it, and it can extract any amount of information from it, including titles, tags, on-page content, and things like that. Cool. So basically, all that manual work is now automated, and um, the good thing about this is that it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Um, here I've scanned an MIT um, website. Um, I've, I've crawled a million pages and I've analyzed uh, 900,000 um, pages, which took seven hours of CPU processing and it cost me $2.20. Now that's, I think that's pretty awesome um, when, it, when it comes to time saving. So um, maybe it's worth investigating. It gets a little bit tricky when you create when you create a new crawl. This is how it works. So you push uh, create new crawl and you give you a, a, a job name. So say you want to um, ted.com um, uh, run environment live. Is this clear enough? Should I zoom in a bit? Okay. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Ted.com um, live server um, and you can you can do the seed list from URLs. You can just uh, do a paste of all the URLs you want or you can do the upload of seeded list. That's basically a CSV file you've pre-uploaded prior to the crawl, um, and you can um, uh, basically include like hundreds or thousands of URLs that you wanted to scan. Basically, and then what you can do is you can um, use regular uh, expressions um, to give it s specific instruction. You can use a simple uh, outgoing link uh, crawl method if that's what you want. Otherwise, you can keep the depth level at um, one or zero. If you want the, only the pages that you specify to be crawled for data, um, and then um, you can also change the uh, crawl type. But I leave it at simple usually, and you can specify the number of pages to crawl. Say, for example, you want you want to crawl, you know, uh, ten thousand pages all up. Um, and you can also limit it by the type of uh, type of content that you wanted to crawl. Basically, you can specify application, audio, image, text. I would probably do text in your case. So if you want like a PDF or a specific type, you can actually uh, specify in the advanced tab. You can specify, um, you can navigate all the way to PDF and um, tell it to scan that in particular. And that, that's, that's the part where you're sort of slicing and segmenting what you, what you wanted to do. And um, there's some fancy stuff you can do with custom codes, but I, I don't know how to do it myself, so I'm not going to recommend it for you. Um, but the cool part is here in the pre-existing apps. So basically, keyword matcher. You've got you've got uh, return page content um, and uh, document data. So basically, it'll strip off any um, any elements of the page and give it to you as a downloadable file. Um, then on which you can then run it, uh, the analysis. So you can uh, specify which type of pages to analyze, not just crawl. So basically, you can you can tell it analyze only HTML pages, and of course you can limit it by the by the file size. So you hit create crawl, and it'll give you um, maybe in a day or two once it's finished. Most of the time, it's uh, it's spent uh, uh, just waiting in a queue for the job to be done. So I'm thinking this is this is one way you can um, automate um, what you, what you're doing and create a lot of useful data. Good thing with this is that it gives you gives you uh, pages. And it gives you like it gives you the format that uh, Jeffy can work with, um, and you can attach um, other things to it like um, you know uh, importance levels and uh, things like that. So that's an alternative to running uh, that Facebook um, plugin. 
So, uh, did you see those two links I pasted in uh, in the chat? Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Basically, um, this document here uh, is using NetViz and Jeffy to analyze a Facebook network. So, kind of runs through what they've done there, and there's a there's a slide uh, slideshow that takes through steps that they've taken. I think that might be quite useful. So, if you're trying to do something quickly and, and, and find some conclusions. I think I think automating things and running it neat is is the way to go. And then perhaps with all the the wealth of data that he already collected, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, waste that. I would still do something with that. But as far as times go, time goes, I think this is your top option. I don't know what others others think about this. So I can um, make, uh, go ahead. I I was going to say there's a. Um, there's also a free one called Boson, B-O-S-O-N, um, and if you um, just Google on that, you'll you should find it. it has uh, it's out of one of the Australian universities, and I think they've taken the company out of there. Um, but it's a free account, but it's it's restricted as opposed to 80 legs, um, which will do, but you have to pay for it. Um, but with Boson, you can do it for free, but it, it um, only does so much at a time. Um, okay. The one good thing about doing a crawl is you're not um, necessarily, you're eliminating some of the biases that are inherent in kind of your categorization as you put this together, which I think would be something that would um, you'd be criticized for. Um, but you still have, you know, with your starting links, you still have the um, the times that you found them. You still got um, the uh, um, some of the shared some of the tags also, and their interestingness. And you can still do the filtering once you're in there uh, from eighty legs. Okay, so. It so that, that would be quintessentially putting in these links, whether it's with a CSV file or whatever, putting these links in um, and then extract, you know, automating the tagging process. Okay, so for the purposes of that I have a really short time frame and I've got some tags <laughs> that, are, that are in a matrix right here, is there a way to, you know, map these tags, you know, relative to each other? So say, you know, I've got a... Can I do like a net, network Gephi thing that has them like clustered together? These tags are are used generally together, right? And then say I extract all of the things that are tagged image, and then I look at the network cluster of all of the tags that are used under the tag, or I guess at the same time as the tag image. Is that something that's possible to do? I think that's exactly what you'll get out of Gephi. Okay. Is um, you'll get these kinds of relationships because if they're co-occurring, those things are more likely to be related to each other than not. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I, I think, think that's exactly what you'll see. So, as um, a layman, is, <laughs> how do I do that? I mean, is there is there an... an an easy streamlined way to I, I see you guys' face and I'm like, oh my gosh. But is, is there I mean a a streamlined way to take the data that I already have and and you know make a couple of network graphs so I could say, okay, this is the this is the graph of all of the tags and this is how the graph looks of only the tags that are tagged image or of all the tags that are tagged TED. And yeah, they'll be personally biased because I put the tags on there manually, but it's a start. You know, it's something to share, just, just to communicate to people like, look, here's one starting point, right? I think that there are going to be other people at this conference that are either already tracking ideas or have, you know, the potential to, to create more than what I've created. So I'm really kind of you know, in addition to sharing this, trying to kind of pique their interest and say, hey, you know, here's what I've got, you know, what else can we, can I do? So as as well as I can do that, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to, so. Mm -hmm. I mean. I think um, the, the problem is, say you had a network where um, you were breaking it down by tags, right? So you said, 
here's the network for things tagged X. What then would the nodes represent, and what would the lines, the edges represent? So in in a in a like uh, a co-occurrence network, you would have each um, node would be a tag, and the edges would represent co-occurrence. If you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So that's like fairly obvious. But if you were to break it down by anything other than that, I can't see. I mean, this is what I mean about the basics of like a structural question, because we have to have some idea of what it is that each each node represents. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, if if each node represents if a, you... a tag. Yeah. I mean, then then the tags that are used most frequently together theoretically would be closer together in yeah. that network. And yeah. the tags that are not used together are going to be farther away. If you use a force-directed I mean, like layout, then yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that... Yeah, I mean, yeah so, I mean, yeah, I, so I'm also kind of trying to think of, you know, I guess a hierarchical sort of look to it. I mean, on these, on these, on these later pages, right? That are, you know, that are tags that are only the tags that are like science, image, or video. I mean, I think, you know, they're they're also they've been asking me to tell a story with quantified self, and I don't know if I'll be able to get a story, but I think, you know, looking at okay, here's a month's worth of data. Okay, here are all the tags within that month. Here are how those tags are networked together. I think there might be interesting tags that are kind of that that are between other groups of tags that I could see on Gephi but that I'm not really able to see on a spreadsheet. What do you mean by between? Well, I forgot what I mean. Is this is like basic uh, network information and I've forgotten the word. <laughs> but you know when you have two big clusters of of nodes, right? And you've got one node uh, in the middle. Bridging. Bridging. Bridge. Yeah, yeah. I think that there might be some topics that are like that, mm. but I don't know what they are. So if, if, just to go back to this, if they want you to tell a story and you want some kind of like longitudinal or temporal dimension to this, you have the date of all of these links. Mm -hmm. You can build a like a co-presence like tag graph by month by month cumulatively. So you could visualize the evolution of the co-tagging. But yeah. I mean, it wouldn't. It would be pretty, but it wouldn't necessarily be informative. If you know what I mean, like. Why? Well, maybe it would, but this is kind of a fishing expedition. Do you know what I mean? Like, rather than starting with the the insight and saying, well, this would be good for this reason, we're kind of saying, well, let's just do this and see if it's good. So it might be a lot of work and yeah. then not be that useful, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and like others have mentioned, you're kind of on a, a tight schedule, so. Yeah, just a <laughs> Joshua, do, do you mean uh, Do you mean for, for her to clean up or not sort of extract uh, the data by by specific month and only to play with that in Jeffy. So, so literally yeah, filter I've, everything out. So yeah, what I'm suggesting is you can add, uh, as you add a graph, you have the option to add it as a time point. Um, and basically uh, you can create a filtered visualization at each time series based on based on that data, you could do that. Okay. Certainly. So yeah. what, I'm, what I'm asking, would this be one file, or would she have to create separate files? Um, well, this would be one Gephi project, which yeah. would contain all of the time slices. You'd have to import them into Gephi as time slices, discrete units. Um, and there's all the data filtering that would go along with that. So, you know, like I say, it's not one for the faint-hearted. I'm not sure if it's doable in your time frame, but... yeah. Um, I question? might suggest the, the following is instead of perhaps taking all of your data, just taking your um, ones that got fives, and there's less than 100 of those. Um, maybe just take the first 10 or so and see how they relate. You know, just if you want to brute force it, just do it by hand that way. That's one way to, to go about doing it using your existing data is you would take uh, I I'm at the uh, one called top rank dot sort dot tag rank dot entry okay okay and you've got um, lines two and three and um, you know just go across and wherever they're 
um, toe tags, and I'm not seeing anything, but this gets kind of blurry after a while. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot of okay. tags. Okay. <laughs> then they don't, they don't relate. There's no edge between those two um, ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yes. And just, um, you know, go through them, you know, go through five of them and see how much of that's happening. That's one way to look at it. So. Okay. So, I mean, would that, would that be, I mean, manually going through and, and noting which ones are tagged together? Um, yeah. I mean, that's a horrible thing to do. <laughs> I, 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 I'm realizing that I've bitten off a lot here in this yeah. project. Uh, a little bit outside my expert, my range of expertise. Mm -hmm. However, I'm confident that something can, I mean, that I can do better than these bar charts. Uh huh. So if I, I mean, if I put this matrix into Gephi as it is right now, just the normal that that first one that's just interestingness data. I mean, it would. It wouldn't because these those are just. Um, in terms of the, um, those are just the node lists. They're just node lists. Okay. Node qualities, node attributes. Okay. Okay. And you've got to get the edges in there somehow, and that's what you're lacking. Okay. 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 So if I if I did, you know, the first uh, the first column being all of the topics, and then across the top all of the topics. In order to see which ones are tagged together the most, is that the kind of format that I could put in that would have it graph them, graph all the topics as a as a network with with clusters? And I mean, if I did it as a, a force directed graph, as you guys are, were saying. Well, you, I don't. I still don't see where you're getting the edges yet. I think you need to have a case like a one by one case. So if you have if you have an item and it has three or four tags, I think mm -hmm. you need to break that down into four lines. So that oh. way we can get we can get the relationship between the item and the tag. So basically, you have. Let me give you an example on your YouTube um, or video uh, section tag the video. Uh -huh. um, you've got. Cool um, there, guys. Sorry, I should share my screen here. Well, that it's not really uh, much. I, I don't think that's much of a. I think it's a prerequisite to. Actually, do anything uh, with this with this data. So, if um, okay, so we look at this one. So that's a video. Um, I would probably I don't know maybe ignore this one for now, okay. and I would focus on the uh, column D. So basically, I've got music, TEDx, uh, S-P, and video. So basically, I would what 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 format you'd need this in is this one, repeating okay. again, again, and again. Okay. One says music, one says TEDx, one says SP, and one says video. Okay. And then Basically. you can sort them. Yeah, and and you can. And then once you, you sort anything. on column the new column D, that's that's now only one tag. Okay. Then okay. You, can, you can group them. I've got to sign off because I have to share uh, this with my. Um, Son's uh, nightly Skype session with his girlfriend. So, good luck and uh, thank you. Email me if you need uh, anything else. Hope okay. I've been helpful. Thank you, Vicky, for sure. You, <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye bye. 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 Oh, and I didn't mean to badmouth Node Excel. I just prefer Gephi. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>
So what we've got here is we've got we've got uh, we've got an edge. So now we can we have a link between the two um, entities. So um, you can do all sorts of things now with this. You can look at occurrence of uh, of different uh, uh, keywords on different. Uh, perhaps you can just focus on videos. That's a small chunk. Um, yeah. For your presentation, you can you can print a graph using your your videos. So uh, you can you can call um, eighty legs or even manually um, scrape the tags of YouTube videos because they're loaded with tags. Now, mm -hmm. keeping in mind that they wouldn't be your tags, they would be just everything. People can put gibberish in there as well. Uh -huh. um, but that's one way to do it. Like um, if you if you strip, like you take the URL of the YouTube video and then you strip all of its tags which are contained within the page, then you've got something. And then if you break it down per each one per line, I think you've got enough material there to, I think it would be like just one night of fiddling with uh, Jeffy's interface and maybe using different transformations and I think you'll find a cool graph to show in your presentation. It may be something that you say you want something, you know, we want knowledge, you want a little discovery of something. I think you could, you could, Actually, find something interesting if you focus perhaps YouTube and 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 specific tags. But I, I would be I would hate to do this manually. Like uh, I, I would definitely try to <laughs> pull it out of somewhere. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm realizing automation is my friend. Okay, all right. So then, all right. I'll try this then. Putting. Uh, is there is there, <laughs> I guess there's not a way to to automate the individual line making of all of these with one tag each. Or there, it would probably take more time to figure out how to do that than to actually do it. You'd probably uh, have to learn to script or something. God, learn to script. Call a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what uh, I do. Yeah, a friend actually built the macros for me. That's where I am. <laughs> um, okay. Um. All right. So. How about this? I'm going to see if I can make a network map of the individual videos um, topically. Okay, individu individual videos mapped to topics uh, in Getfee. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I know that sounded very confident, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what's, what's going to determine the size of a node? Uh, I guess the weight of it by I mean, interconnectivity with other concepts, other tags, or um, I don't know. I guess this is my challenge. I don't know what to think about, uh, or I don't know what I should be thinking about. Um, I guess Joshua, that... you reckon in degree would work with this? Yeah, I think that would work. Um, there aren't too many options, really. I mean, it's a directed network, so you could use um, PageRank. Uh, but mm, it's not a directed network, actually, is it? So that wouldn't make sense. The only other thing you could really use would be the um, importance score, the subjective importance score. Yeah, I mean, well, it is quantified self, so in, in a sense, I guess... I it's... think that that's relevant, I have to say. Yeah. I think the subjectivity of this is part of it, and you shouldn't yeah. shy away from it. I think, I think maybe hits... If you use a uh, hits uh, algorithm, uh, that would give you. But that's no. That's hits of hits of video isn't going to reflect what videos oh, I found oh. most important. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about. Um, uh, it's it's kind of <laughs> like PageRank. Okay. Yeah. I, hits, I don't know what page, PageRank. Do you mean like the? Oh, so, uh, a web okay. Page on the so, internet. Uh, so how Google how Google works is basically they count links from one page to another. Uh -huh. And so if, if a page collects a lot of links from other pages, it collects, accumulates page rank, and then when it links to other pages, it passes that page rank on. So that's how Google ranks uh, documents yeah. on the web. Well, that, wouldn't so, that bias it towards the most popular pages then? No, no, because you're running your own little secluded environment. You wouldn't run with Google's page rank. But uh, Hits oh. kind of works in a similar way but because... You could do that, actually. Uh, there are websites that let you derive the page rank of links when you feed it in, and you could use that as a as a attribute, but it, please continue. In general, it's an isolated yeah, yeah, thing well, in your network. But that would be that would not be Amy's influence. There would be other people's opinions. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, 
uh, you would have to sort of disclose that. But with with HIT's um, algorithm, it actually if you go, um, okay, I'm going to do a screen share again, just so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so in the um, interface here, can you see um, this HIT's uh, line here? Yeah. Basically, I can I can do I can hit run on this on this network, and I can you know hit OK, and basically it calculates the hubs and author hub and authority distribution. Basically, hubs um, are nodes or in your case topics that um, link out or mention a lot of other influential or a lot of other good topics or relevant topics, and um, authority is Basically, authority node will be the one that's linked with a lot of good hubs. I think that works with the directed, actually. Um, Joshua said um, it's not a directed cross. It um, may work. I don't know. I, basically, what you can do is then, uh, in here, you can select uh, hub, and you can change the size of, of your nodes by, by hub, and you can apply. See how this changed now? Yeah. So basically, we're looking at this one, this one node. I was recognized as a, as a hub. Um, and, okay, or you can do the reverse of that. You can choose authority and apply. And then you, you're looking at all the, all the nodes in this uh, graph that are seen as authoritative. So perhaps this, this is one way you can, uh, you can structure data. And then, of course, um, Joshua, any recommendations on transformation? Um, uh, what, how how many nodes are we talking here? Ooh. Oh, in um, in uh, video graph, I think we've got uh, uh, only um, we've got eighty four we've got eighty four or eighty three videos, but um, any any video may have up to fifty tags. So you're looking at a well. I think the most number of tags that we'll see is like I don't think anything has more than ten tags. Just so you guys know. That's 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 assuming that you're not scraping YouTube's own. Oh, tag. yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, if you are, then it, there'll be you know, ten, twenty, fifty, any number of tags included. Um, mm. But I, I, I think uh, transformation that you're hunting for is the one that'll give you kind of like what you put in your um, header for the uh, for the hangout. Mm -hmm. You know, clusters, clusters, yeah. and then yeah. little little. You know, groupings in between. I think maybe yeah. that's the highlight that you want to point out during your presentation. Yeah, is, that's. Yeah, you're really looking at force atlas too, probably with that kind of size network. At what? Uh, with force atlas two, I would say, um, it doesn't need to be one of the faster ones. I don't think it doesn't. I don't think you need to use OpenOrd, but Fruktum and Rheingold is probably going to be too slow. I would say. What do, What do you think, Dan? Um, I would. I would probably um, no. I would do that one. I would increase the speed manually, hack it, mm. and I would actually display it live to audience as it transforms. It's got the cool effect, right? You got to keep you got to keep your audience animated, not just informed, right? I would actually I would have the program up there, and I would I would hit play. Just make sure you have a fast a fast enough machine that can do this. But you can you, like if you find that it's too, too slow, you can always adjust the number. I think there's a setting in there that you can do speed 10 or 50 or whatever. Um, that can actually help you. But I think that will have the wow effect, definitely. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, on um, a medium on a medium sized graph, it shouldn't take more than 60 seconds to converge completely. And probably even within half of that time, it will be, you know, 90% there. Cool. Here's so an idea. Is, you can use coloring as well. Like, yeah. Yeah. So uh, size could represent one thing. And coloring could okay, so coloring could could represent the closeness, perhaps, mm -hmm. or like a topical relevance, and uh, size could represent the um, influence of that particular topic, if you use the hubs algorithm. So basically, you could have you know uh, fruit being the central point, and you could have apples and pears being sort of if fruit is uh, red. You could have apples and pears, sorry, orange, and then plants is you know a little bit less. So you have you, you get a nice gradient. You get the sizes sorted out. Um, I think I think uh, this could work. We just don't know what you're gonna get once you put it in your uh, in your graph. Yeah, it's kind of exciting though. 
It is. I think. I think. Uh, uh, ping is back. Show us what you've done when, once it's finished. I think I'd be confident doing this with uh, with YouTube, in particular, because you've got a manageable number of URLs. You've got a manageable number of tags. Um, have a play. Um, 80 legs actually does have a free account as well, which limits you to you know I don't know maybe a thousand URLs. You don't even need that many. You just yeah. need you know, you just need 80 80 URL, uh, URLs literally. Um, and you can strip off all your tags and produce a, a spreadsheet. Um, the only thing I'm not sure about is when it gives you all the tags, can you really transform them in an Excel sheet that it shows line by line? And that's perhaps a call a friend type activity. <laughs> I didn't yeah. understand uh, that you said that you have up to 16 tags. Is this, you're talking about uh, Jeffy or YouTube or? I think he means in my spreadsheet. Oh, right, right in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Wow, I have something with 16 tags. It's a lot of tags. Not so great a job at keeping it low. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, okay, I've, you guys have been on the phone for a long time, and I really, really appreciate your, your input. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an attempt at doing, at, at, at reformatting the, the video sheet on here so that each entry has one single tag and then I use Force Atlas 2 to put it into Gethy? Uh, Force Atlas 2 is the, just the layout routine, okay. the position, the nodes. I mean, it, there's, there are some tutorials on just like how to lay out nodes and how to, how to lay out the graph rather, how to do the, do the stuff with the um, color coding and the sizing that we can probably post in the group. If that okay. Would okay. So once so once I have those with an individual topic per entry, I is that I mean then I reformat that somehow to go into Gethy. <laughs> you'd, you'd you'd go to Data Lab and and well first your Data lab. CSV would yeah you, your okay. CSV would contain uh, the what is it? Linking and link. A link and a tag. Link tag. I guess, I guess but I think there's a specific uh, naming convention you have to use when you import a CSV. Um, okay. Let me see if I can uh, if I can find it uh, in here. Okay. Um, okay. Data lab. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick uh, screen share again. Um, all right. So. Import spreadsheet. Um, so you would do the um, edges table, comma separated if that's uh, what you have. And oh, I don't have a file to import right now, um, but I think it's link um, linking and linked. I think that's basically those two uh, categories. But I'm I'm also perhaps thinking you could use um, you could use uh, these. Um, what did you call them? You had a strength uh, parameter, weight. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's the level of influence. I, I wouldn't want to lose that because that's very personal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So perhaps you can you can assign. This solves the problem of the um, sizes of the nodes. So you can assign weight three, four, five, whatever to um, to tags. And you can color it by uh, connection, by uh, you know co-presence or, or whatever the term is. Okay. So um, you'd literally need uh, just what three three columns in your spreadsheet. Okay. Well, that dramatically your, simplifies things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> URL, a tag, and influence. So you would need to remember to repeat the weight for that same um, YouTube video yeah. for each each instance. Though I'm not sure how that would affect um, if you have fitness in one video and um, fitness as a tag in the other video, and one video is influence one and the other video is influence five. Is that useful? Um, or is that confusing things? What will it do with that? Probably just average it out. Oh, are you are you asking me? I don't know. 
I'm, I'm asking <laughs> anybody, anybody really. Joshua, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I think it would probably average it. Um, I'm not sure how useful that would be as a metric. Um, because the the utility, like the the whatever that score is, is per item, whereas we're now we're talking about a, a different kind of transformation of the data, aren't we? So it doesn't yeah. perhaps make so much sense anymore. Um, anyway, we can use that data still, not because yeah. there's so much work put into it. <laughs> um, perhaps we can find some some way to to use it, even even if it's. Coloring, I don't know. I, I see coloring as different topical relevance, and I see um, size as kind of weight or influence. Impact, or yeah, Impact, yeah, absolutely. yeah. Well, I mean, and I could even look at you know anything that's tagged only four or five, and then just call them equally weighted. Or I don't know if you, if if I only use two different weights, like if I just use four and five, uh, and it averaged it, then that would probably be more. I mean, that that would be okay, appropriate, right? Because if something is a four and it's also linked to a five, it would have greater weight than if something was just a four linked to another four. Um, I would be, I would keep them all, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, and and like Dan is saying, use that as data in its own right. So don't don't worry about. I mean, you're going to have to do a little bit of kind of trial and error and see what happens. If it if it averages it out, then maybe you end up with a summary statistic. It could still be useful if you wanted to do some. Um, like scaling or color coding or, or whatever it is. Um, but it could be that, I mean, I'm struggling to think about how this will look. <laughs> I, uh, I think that you will still have the individual data there for, you know, some summary statistics or something like that if you wanted to present those as well. Okay. Worth keeping, definitely. Okay, cool. All right, well, well I am going to put this in Gaffy and, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make an attempt at this, and whenever I get a a first run like a trial graph put together, I'll put it on the Gaffy Facebook page, um, and I'll at you guys or tag you guys in there so you can see it, <laughs> uh, um, okay. and then we can you know we can catch up and you can, you guys can tell me what I can do better and whatnot. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. I'll take some I'll take some homework um, from yeah. this. I'll um, I'll I'll. Take a uh, uh, take your um, YouTube or video um, section, and I'll try to do something with it, time permitting. Um, I'll I'll see how it goes, and cool. if I produce a graph that can be of any use, I'll I'll show it to you. Otherwise, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> cool, that'll be awesome. That'll be really okay. awesome. I have to. I'm gonna have to give you guys shout outs in my presentation for sure. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> Serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a screenshot. I'll take a screenshot of this chat. <laughs> <laughs> this will be great. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate your help. I was just really stuck on this, and I think it was really helpful to talk to people who know what they're doing. You're welcome. Good luck. Yeah, good luck with this. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to stop the broadcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Bye-bye now. <laughs>